Hello, my name is Bill Ellis. Uh, I have the privilege of serving as the Executive Director for the Board of Pharmacy Specialties. This session is BPS 101. I uh, want to talk a little bit about the Board of Pharmacy Specialties and the work that we do. Uh, the purpose of BPS, and we were established as an autonomous division of APHA in 1976, is to recognize specialty practice areas, define standards for recognized specialties, and then, of course, evaluate the knowledge and skills of individual pharmacists to apply for specialty recognition. And then we communicate the importance of specialization in pharmacy. Uh, BPS uh, has a number of credentials. Uh, Nuclear Pharmacy was the first in 1978. And uh, just recently, in 2018, compounded sterile preparations was approved as the most recent, uh, recent specialty. Other specialties include nutrition support, pharmacotherapy, psychiatric pharmacy, oncology pharmacy, ambulatory care, critical care, pediatric pharmacy, geriatrics, cardiology, and infectious diseases. Uh, talk a little bit about credentials used in pharmacy practice. Credentials are a very broad term and they include a lot of different things. Credentials include academic degrees, um, your license, a residency certificate. Of course, board certification is also a credential. Other academic degrees, people go on and get, you know, master's in business administration or master's in public health. And then they also have some other credentials, um, things like maybe they're certified diabetes educator credential or an immunization certificate. Uh, it's important when we talk about certificates and certification to explain what the differences are. A certificate is a document that's issued to an individual after they've achieved a predetermined level of performance in education or a training program. I think maybe the best example of that might be the immunization training program or a pharmacy residency. After you complete those, you get a certificate. Certification is different, even though it sounds similar. Certification is a voluntary process where professionals who are certified meet established goals, skills, or competencies. They tend to be broad in scope, but the goal of the certification is really an independent validation of the competency, and that's attained through a high stakes examination. So there's not a preparation course, there's not reading materials. This is an independent assessment of a professional's knowledge, skills, and competencies in a, de in a defined area. Specialty residency in the applicable specialty area, and you're immediately eligible for the examination. The three-year pathway is that you have completed a PGY-1 and have two additional years of practice experience in the specialty area with at least 50% of your time spent in the activities defined by that specialty. The four-year pathway is um, four years of practice experience. It does not require residency, but you have to have four years of practice experience in the specialty area with at least half of your time spent in any of the activities defined by the BPS specialty content outline. And then, of course, you have to achieve a passing score on the certification exam as well. The exam format testing, 175 questions. It's a four-part currently um, option multiple choice exam. There are some alternative item types that might use um, some images or video or those kinds of things. Um, but essentially, it's 175 for option multiple choice exam. Part one is 100 questions, two hours and 30 minutes. Part two is 75 questions, uh, one hour and 53 minutes. You have an option to take a break between parts. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, exams are, are administered via computer-based testing centers. The company that BPS works with is called Prometric, a large international uh, provider of test center services. We have two testing windows. Spring is the last two weeks in April, first week in May, and then a fall testing window last two weeks in September, first week in October. The application windows precede those, so you need to check the BPS website for the application deadlines, but these are the when the exams are offered, spring and fall of each year. Once you earn certification, you also have to maintain certification through a recertification process, and there's two pathways. Um, after the initial exam, you could sit for a BPS recertification exam at the end of seven years, it's 100 questions or you could choose to use um, a professional development program, essentially specially approved continuing education. That will vary between 101 and 120 hours earned over seven years. In order to earn those credits, so it's a little different than some live um, ACPE approved courses, you must pass the um, post test for each of those certification programs. So there still is a test involved. It's not just the same as a, a BPS certification. Uh, this next chart here shows the um, number of specialties in the growth. Basically, the number of board-certified pharmacists are doubling about every five years. There's now 
um, 36,000 board certified pharmacists worldwide. And so you can see the trend here. Um, you know, people often ask, well, BPS has really grown. And where that is true is evidenced by this graph. What's really happened is the practice of pharmacy has grown. Um, pharmacists now, fortunately, are involved in a lot more direct patient care activities and a lot more specialized direct patient care activities. So the growth of BPS really parallels the growth of pharmacy practice. If you'd like more information, please feel free to call us at 202-429-7591 or our website, bpsweb.org, has a lot of the same information and, and much more. So thank you for your time and attention today.